Uh, Thank you for the recording reminder, Zainab. Awesome, we're ready. Uh, so yeah, we're just gonna go down the, the list uh, and Rexford, you can go first. All right. All right, hi everyone, uh, my name is Rex. Um, this is the uh, demo for my personal project, um, Chore Manager. So Chore Manager is an app designed to help uh, parents easily uh, manage their kids' chores. Um, I use React on the front end, Django on the back end with the PostgreSQL uh, database. And I use uh, the Pokemon API and uh, Rapid API. So this is the login page for, for my app. Uh, if you don't have a um, account, if you don't have an account, you can click on this create account button and it takes you to this page where you can create an account. Um, I already have an account, so I'm just going to go to the login page and log in. Okay, so this is the home page. And here is uh, if I want to change, make any changes to my user profile, um, I can go click on edit profile and make those changes. So it looks like I misspelled my name, so I'm just going to fix that real quick. Um, submit. And those changes are reflected. And I can also change my avatar. Choose uh, this one. And that change is reflected as well. So that's the CRUD for to make changes to my profile. And then here I have this uh, quote that I'm pulling from Rapid API. Uh, it's a motiv motivational quote. Um, and then down here, we have the uh, child management section and the chore management section. So right now I don't have any children added to my uh, website right now. So let's go ahead and add some children, add child, name, Kevin. And so now Kevin, my child is added. Um, if I want to change Kevin's information, I can click on this edit button and add Kevin's last name. And I can also change Kevin's avatar. And so those changes are reflected. So right now, Kevin hasn't completed any chores yet. So his balance is zero. Um, and then when I go, to, if I want to see all of the chores assigned to Kevin, I can go to chores. And then right now it says no chores yet. And so, and the balance is zero, go back. And let's uh, create some chores and assign them to Kevin. So add chore. Uh, do uh, wash dishes, I don't know. And then you also have an option to like um, assign a money value to the chore. Whenever the ch uh, chore is completed, the child gets that reward. So let's say $10 for completing washing the dishes. And so down here, you can see wash dishes has been added and the reward is $10, but it hasn't been assigned to a child yet. So. I can assign it to Kevin by going to edit and then assign to, just choose Kevin, submit. So now we can see that it's been assigned to Kevin. Oh, let me move this out of the way. Okay. So now when we go to chores, we can see that wash dishes has been added to Kevin's chores and completed. No, he hasn't completed it yet. So let's go back and Let's say Kevin has completed a chore, I can mark this as complete. And that balance, uh, the reward $10 has been added to Kevin's balance. And uh, now when we go to chores, completed yes, and total balance is $10. So let's say I go in the kitchen, right? And I see that Kevin hasn't uh, finished washing the dishes. I can just, you know, come here, uncheck this, and then it takes it away uh, from his balance. And then whenever they do actually complete it, I can just check it again and it adds it back to you, get balance. And if I want to edit the chore, like I can change the name to, you know, was, uh, finish homework. I can change the reward price as well. I can either increment or I can put a, another value in here. And those changes are reflected. Um, 
and then I can uncheck this. You can also delete choice. So I can go back, go to edit and delete a child. And now it says assigned to no, not assigned yet. I can also delete a chore. And uh, yeah, that's my uh, website. And then you can log out, obviously. That's awesome. That's Thank you so much. That's awesome. Yeah, very cool. And that was a great walkthrough of the feature set too. Thank you, Rex. Yeah, you got it. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, folks, definitely feel free to share thoughts and like or questions in the chat. Um, I I think people, you know, if you have a question or want to share something, feel free. Uh, we may just guide things along in terms of the in the interests of time. But otherwise, of course, we always love to have everyone share in as much just like applause and feedback is awesome. And if we didn't mention it, just getting here is awesome. So really happy to be seeing these presentations. Um, yeah, shall we? Let's let's keep it rolling. Yeah, Kevin, you're next. All righty, let's go ahead. And I'll start to sharing my screen. Already nervous. Thanks. Alrighty, so here is my cleaning app. Hey, can everybody see it? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So this is the registry page, like the usual username, email, password, and confirm password. I already have one made, so we can go ahead and redirect to the login page. And this is my username, Bob123, and a, a standard uh, password. And you can also go back to the registry page if you do not have a login in case. So we go ahead and submit and we logged into my cleaning app. You see Squidward cleaning my, my background, as you can see, live clean, clean, right, use the correct solutions. Cool. There's my carousel of the, my, my slides of SpongeBob being a cleaning Squidward, right? Look, Mr. Krabs clean floors. And then this is, you know, before you use my app and during, and then that's uh, the API from Jiffy to get all my moving images and it's all randomized. So we change it and go from different sad and cleaning SpongeBob's. And, you know, just for, for the background, I, it kind of diverged to uh, SpongeBob themed, but uh, to the main point um, for my app, you get to choose a surface and depending on that surface, it will give you tips um, and the product along with it to help you clean. So in this case, uh, we do acrylic and it says right here, directive, direct de decorative idle objects and the routine care for it and a tip and special instructions in case uh, it has some. And then the bottom, you see the acrylic cleaner with the product uh, and the link. So if I press this, it will redirect me to, well, let's see. Can you see the Amazon page? Yes. Yes, okay, yeah. cool. So yeah, uh, it'll give me a result on Amazon once you click that link. And then for the crudding is going to be the ad surface. So we'll redirect you to a page and you can choose and uh, write down your own surface. And then once you choose it, so grant it for mine, submit or redirect to the homepage. And on the bottom, you'll see a new surface called granite. We'll go into granite. It says a granite cleaner right here, large, and full link at the bottom as well. And you can press this button. It'll have all the tips, uh, the editing you can do. So we add a tip. And this time we do sassy tests, the routine care, and the special instructions, and submits. It will redirect you back to the page. And then it's right here. And if you don't want to have this here, my second crud is you're able to delete this tip or edit it. So. In this case, we're going to edit it, say right here, edit to submit and right here, it updates. And then if you don't want to delete this as well, you can, it says right here, are you sure you don't want to, you want to delete this? Yes. And it deletes. And also for the surface as well, you want to delete this surface. Okay. And it redirects you to the homepage. And as we check the surfaces, granite is no longer there. And then log out as cool, of course, and that's the end of my presentation.
That's awesome. Thank you. Very cool. Thank you. Did Sounds you have great. to add that cleaning solution for the the granite one, like before, or how was? Oh uh, no, it's it's automatically uh, populated when you input the surface name. So it will add in, it will search granite, and then adds the word cleaner to it, and oh. search out products for that. That's so cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, Skyler. All right. How's it going? <laughs> Pretty good. Good, good man. Here we go. Okay, so my project is yet another Pokemon game. Yeah. Um, so here's my uh, front page. If uh, you'd like to see my, uh, one of my APIs is if you go to a page you're not supposed to, um, it go ahead and loads some random image. And uh, I like to do weird things like uh, look at windows. But maybe you like to look at something else. So I have some other goofy things here. Sorry, it's not changing. Actually, here, hold on. So take me back to the world. OK, sorry, one more I, just to show you those different uh, images. No, it did not do another one. Oh, my goodness. Okay, we're not going to do this anymore. It does do different images, I promise. You've been Jedi mind tricked. Uh, okay, so here's my sign up page. Um, new account at sambino.com. Okay, so I've been uh, successfully creating the account. So now I'm at the login page, and cool. I will log in with that info. Yay. Um, so for your main account, um, I just have it to where you can see uh, your account info because I decided most of the content for this would be uh, kind of in the game. So now that you have this play button, um, you can do a new game, load or delete. But obviously, this is a new account, so it hasn't uh, made an account yet. So you can't load or delete. So you can click new. And one sec. Okay. Oh no, I forgot I put this in debug mode. I'm so sorry, one second guys. What this is the is, debug mode doing? Uh, it's this uh, menu where it doesn't work. Yeah, gotcha, no worries. Yep, uh, I was uh, trying to look at my music. I should have elevator music playing. <laughs> right. I should now. That'd be great. <laughs> Where? Oh, no. Am I? Are there other features that you can show or does it you kind of need to get it out of debug mode for the for the whole show? Yeah, it yeah, I just need to literally change the one line, one thing. Here it is, right here. Cool. I think. No, that's not it. Oh my god, that's so goofy. I am so sorry, everyone. Do you want to present later? If, and then you can not have to debug live. Right. Um let me just check one more thing and then uh, I'll give up, but it should have been right here. This is, this is good demo practice too. Right. This is, this is part of the game. And of course, like, you know, trying to, oh, I'm, I was trying to be so fast that I was so slow. Um, <laughs> here it is. Um, I uh, forgot that it, is at the top. Okay, so let me refresh my page here. Okay, so this is more like it. Back, you didn't see any of this. Now you see this, okay? So uh, when you click play, you click new game. Uh, 
so here's like some NPC text. This is supposed to be like the original Pokemon, like blue, red kind of screen. Um, and it looks like he's sleeping. Um, so I put in some music so you can hear some music. But uh, he says, oh, hello. I didn't see you there, but I forgot your name. He's a terrible old man. Um, so then you're going to go ahead and create your trainer account, which I'll just go ahead and be red. Why not? So I'll submit the name. He says, great. Go out there and go do some Pokemon stuff. Uh, I like Bulbasaur. So I'll go ahead and confirm that. And then now you get taken to the game, uh, which I was going to add a lot more, but obviously uh, I had delusions of grandeur. So I had to pull back. <laughs> and, uh, um, and now uh, you can see your Pokemon down here. And you can go to find Pokemon. And uh, what it does is loads uh, the attacks for your particular Pokemon. And it just so happens that this, this uh, Caterpie was faster than me. Uh, his speed's 11, mine's 10. So he went to it and attacked first. But luckily, my guy did good and uh, he missed. So I could attack him back. With, um, with what we're seeing right now, which information comes from... Um... Your, your database and Postgres and what's coming from an API. Yeah, that'll be a good one. Um, let me switch this back so I can actually hear. Uh, yeah, so all my attacks are a, uh, a database item it, themselves, cool. which uh, I can actually, it'd be better to show uh, in the admin page. But um, yeah, if you just wanna walk through which is which, I think that's good for now, only in the interests of time. And then also there's gonna be like a lot of good stuff to see here in that in the in the site okay yeah so uh, i just did that battle i don't have a victory sign but uh and i don't have a a catch like um throwing the pokeball and stuff i really wanted to but uh i didn't get around to that so if you just click catch automatically catches the guy um which adds to the db um and then whenever you click on these guys it actually updates the db of which one's in your first slot uh which makes a difference when you go into the battles. Now, uh, Caterpie will be there. Nice. And I could also switch uh, mid fight too. Yeah, and Alicia, just, I would just go ahead and ask a question. Yeah, and everyone just feel yeah, free sorry, to chime in whatever with thoughts and questions. No, no okay. worries at all. He's no, you're, you're doing awesome. You know, I don't think you shared with music, so we couldn't hear your music going on. Oh, dang it, sorry. I knew you wanted us to be able to hear that, so I just let you know. <laughs> yeah that may be a zoom screen share setting yeah so that yeah can you hear that now well you have to if you end share screen no then, i can hear it it's just faint i don't know it's pain oh, okay i see you could do it with the bit the option with the audio i see okay so it's, it's, it's yeah, when, when you, you click share screen. screen it's down at the bottom left where it says share sound there you, you go it? now we got it yeah okay so uh, i created a mute button because who wants to listen to that okay <laughs> it's a good thing you got the sound working <laughs> yes uh That's awesome. yeah so since you couldn't hear that um uh this would be a great time to show the delete so you can delete my account there goes all my pokemon too um so okay new guy There we go. Now you're bringing me back. <laughs> yeah. So I have a little squirtle there. Pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you got like, um, you got some crud going on quite a bit right here with your account. Uh, you got crud going on with your uh, uh, Pokemon in here and with uh, attacks. Um, what happens so when you load a game? When you load a game, it uh, brings you to your main page here where you'd be able to interact in the game. Um, like if I, I added like, gym battles, I put it here, or like uh, healing, like go to Pokemon Center, stuff like that. Got it. Very cool. That's awesome, awesome man. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm guessing one of your APIs is uh, the Pokemon API. Which, which one is the second one? Or what are your that, APIs in general? Yeah, that's the uh, go to a random page thing. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll show again in a sec. Um, OK, so here's like uh, the attacks model table. So if I were to create a, an attack, I, I, would, I could do it um, or edit it right here. Um, so all the Pokemon Thanks. get it from there. Yeah. And then like uh, Pokemon have their own table. And then you have a, a trainer table. Uh, even if you don't put a name, 
and from testing, you know. But uh, yeah, so there's that. Uh, just to show you that, just to make sure, show you the thing, because it should have actually given us a, there it is. Awesome. Another random image, cool. So Unsplashed is a, a random uh, image generator. So um, yeah, awesome. cool. Thank you. Yeah, thanks guys. Sorry about the hiccups and stuff. No, it's perfectly no. fine. That's, I feel like that's classic tech demo. <laughs> yeah, great job. Thank you, man. Awesome. Garrett, you're up next. Okay, uh, can everyone hear me all right? Yeah, I hear you, man. Okay, cool. I'll share my screen. I love that image. <clears throat> and uh, everyone can see my screen. I guess. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay. So um, this is uh, my sign-in screen. Uh, if you you don't have an account yet, then you can click this link here. It'll take you to a different screen to sign up. Um, the nav bar doesn't have the functionality until you log in, uh, except when you click on this, it takes you to the sign-in screen. This also uses Unsplash. Uh, it searches um, their database by keyword, and the keyword I have selected is medieval. So you'll have medieval themed images. Um, this link here just takes me to uh, my GitHub page. Uh, for uh, I'll just log in with an account I already have. The name for the account is uh, my name. It will take the initials from your account creation, from your first and last name, put them up here. Um, I use the uh, tool tip to uh, show that this opens the settings. You can log out here or um, view the uh, account information. It's also available. Oh, also, when you sign in, this changes from a locked icon to an unlocked icon. Um, could could we see the account information real quick? Yep. Uh, this Beautiful. is it. Um, I didn't uh, implement so you could uh, change account information yet, but I did have it so it calculates your account age. Which is kind of fun to implement. Um, the functionality uh, is available after you log in. The first thing that you do is you build characters. Um, here's a select for base characters that you're going to build off of. If you want to build an elf, then you have their base stats that's available to you, or a dwarf. And uh, this is all uh, saved in a database, their base stats, and then you have 10 points to kind of customize it and uh, uh, build them how you want. You give it a name, and uh, then your character's created, and it's attached to your account that you're logged in as. Here are the characters that I have for um, this account on the viewing page. So this is the building page to build them. And then you'll have a listing of all of them here. Um, cool. Is the base data for characters, is that like hard coded, or is it its own model, or how did you store that information? Um, it's, oh, oh, the base data is um, stored in the database and loaded as fixtures. Cool. Very cool. Um, and then you kind of use that information as the starting point and then it's the fix, it's a character model or something like that. And then you create a new character model when the user customizes it. Yep, exactly. Cool. Um, Very cool, man. Thank you. So this, uh, this is the one we just uh, created. Um, when you click on the different character, um, their information is available to you. You can delete them as needed. You can rename them. And then that reflects here. Um, the moves, If you, again, if you put your cursor over it, it'll show the move, um, whether it's magical, the power and the accuracy of the move, um, and then the stats that are for that character. So once you've built them and you can view them, you can go into battle, uh, select which one of your characters you want to battle with. Uh, and you select it, it's a border is put around it. And then the uh, start dual button um, becomes uh, so that you can click it. It's no longer disabled. I got a loading screen here since it takes a little bit for the APIs to um, do their thing. Uh, show that again. Yeah, I got a little loading screen that works. Sometimes it takes a little longer because um, your enemy character, uh, the image is pulled from the Pokemon API, as you can see. Uh, this is a mm -hmm. random name API. 
And then the moves that the opponent has is from a DND API that I found. So there's three different APIs. Sometimes it takes a little long. So I wanted to put that loading screen in there. That's um, cool. Are the DND moves, those are the, like you call, do you make, do you get them randomly from the DND API every time it's called? Or is it like you store the idea of the move and then how does that, that yeah. work? Yeah, every single time you go into a new battle, they'll have different moves that are attached to the character. Nothing, nothing stored for the enemy. Got it. Cool. Um, Thank you. So you battle. These are the moves you have here. You can see the uh, information again whenever you put your cursor over it. I want to make it so that you can see the enemy stats and moves when you put your cursor over it. Uh, haven't done that yet. Um, you attack, and then there's a three second delay for when they attack. Um, uh, these are dealing a lot of damage right now, just for the sake of time. I made it so it does five times the damage um, that I, I, the calculations normally would. Um, but it looks like he's going to win. Yeah, so my character died. I lost the battle. Uh, if I had won the battle, it'll say I won, and then I'll be awarded um, experience points that um, contribute to whether your character levels up. And then the experience port points is also saved in the database um, and attributed to that character. Um, nice. Yeah, that's, that's all of it. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Anyone in the class got questions? I think we're kind of waiting, seeing them. No questions, but that was awesome, Gary. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I was just going to say the same thing. Yeah, very cool. An awesome demo. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Garrett. Um, let's see, Megan, you're up next. OK. Um, I'm sure you can tell from my voice, but I'm feeling a little under the weather today. So I may hop off mic here and there. So I'm not like coughing directly into your headphones. Um. Much appreciated. Thank <laughs> you. I've been there. Um, OK. Can everyone see my screen? Yep. OK, cool. Um, so I made a uh, kind of a take on a Pomodoro timer um, with a little bit more flexibility built in. So the home page says, welcome to study buddy. And you can start with default settings or customize your timers. Um, but to start off, I have my, my little menu on the side here. Um, which is uh, responsive. Um, and this is something that I was really interested in from Zena and Adam's lectures on um, like logic and how that interacts with um, like what's presented on the screen. So like when we did the, if this is true and this is true, then display X, Y, or Z. And so I was able to get that working with, um, with the menu and like the icons and whether the text displays and you know if this is the full name or not and I'm, i was just i was very happy with how that turned out um yeah it's so, a beautiful interface that's awesome thank you um and so my about page has some about the app very briefly um so pomodoros are um, basically a way of of managing your time and as someone with attention deficit issues um, it really helps me to have sort of set blocks of time to, to work or have a break. Otherwise, I just sort of lose track of things. Um, but some, somewhere where Pomodoro failed me was um, I don't always need to take a break at the end of 25 minutes, which is like the standard work timer. Um, so I built this with the idea of um, I'd be able to choose what my next path was depending on like how I was feeling at the moment, whether I felt like I could work another 25 minutes or if I felt like absolutely nothing was getting done and I really needed to take a longer break. Um, so we can log in here. And if you, um, if you don't have an account, you can sign up for an account. I have an account, so. And then it customizes the welcome screen to show um, the first part, like before the app domain of your email. Um, Cause I didn't really want to deal with a separate username. I only wanted to deal with the email. And then we can do the quick start with default settings or we can customize the timers. 
And so I'll go through each of these options and then down the menu. Sorry, excuse Sounds me. Sounds good. Um, and then, okay, so starting with default settings um, just takes you directly to one of the timers. And so for this project, I actually built my own timing element. Um, and then I wrote a custom hook to interact with it. Um, so everything you see is something that I built, right? So the display of the time, the way it counts down, um, the, the pause and start, um, whether these buttons are disabled or not. Um, so when I go to a timer, I decided that I only wanted like from the quick start or from the home menu, I only wanted one click to get to functionality. Um, so um, the, uh, the timer will start right away, but if you reset it, you would have to click again to get it to start. So you can reset it to the initial value, you can start it, you can pause it at any point, and then it can count all the way down. <clears throat> um, That's awesome. Um, what does the custom hook do? Um, so the hook does, um, it does the pause function out. So it does the pause, uh, play, uh, the reset. Um, it checks whether it's running or not. Um, it also, I have an on complete. So um, the on complete uh, function, um, you can do anything on when it's done running. So when it counts down to zero, um, it also makes sure that it, it doesn't have invalid um, input. Um, so you couldn't enter a negative number um, or zero. Um, so the on complete, uh, in this case, I took it to the, the continue page or the menu page here. So you could keep working, take a quick break or take a longer break. Um, and that's this menu button here. Cool. So- And thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, you could, so again, just so that I can show the functionality here, the menu would take you to here. Um, and then from home, you can customize your timers. That's also the settings page. And each of these timers um, can be stored in the database. For this demo, I decided to disconnect this functionality from the actual timers, because um, I thought it would be pretty boring to watch a 25 minute timer countdown. And I wanted you to see the timers end. Um, but you can adjust these from the sliders here um, or here. Um, and you can type in here as well. And you can save and continue or you can reset. Um, it doesn't need a name either. Um, and cool. then you do so have- each user has like, there's a timer model or something with that name and the user model. And then there's a one-to-one. A -one. Uh, correct, yes. Um, cool. And so that's my database interaction. Um, my APIs are for authentication and also for um, for time. So this bit is just sort of a, um, a proof of concept. Um, eventually, if I keep working on this, I would want it to have um, estimates of when each time we would finish. Um, and then uh, I had also originally planned on doing this demo with um, like I had the ability to sort of toggle play Spotify in this, but it was kind of buggy and I didn't want to deal with that during the demo. So I decided to take that out. Um, and so uh, here's an account page. You can delete your account or save. I'm not going to delete because that would just cause me issues right now. Um, and then you also have a logout, which takes you um, to the goodbye page. And uh, that's it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's awesome, Megan. Thank you. Um, I might have missed it, but what was your second API? Um, so I had uh, Joser for my authentication. Okay, awesome. Uh, Kaylee, you're up next. Hey guys, how's it going? Um, so I'm showing off my uh, app called Place Share. Um, so basically the idea is that you have um, lists of places that you can share with people. Um, so let me go here and just do a sign up. Um, I'm just gonna act like we're a new user. Um, 
So we'll insert a password. I have some like requirements of how long it's gotta be. Um, and then also you can input um, a zip. And I actually have a, I have an API here because um, I use Google Maps to validate that this zip code actually exists. Um, if it were to be something else, um, it would give you a zip code not recognized, but you can um, two, three, four, five, we'll use this one. So you'll sign up, they'll take you to login page. I forgot what my password was that I put in. Uh, okay, there we go. Um, okay, so here is um, the Google Maps API I'm using here and basically the home view. Um, it's just the regular map view. Um, so from here, you can add places. Um, so let's say, um, actually first let's make a list. Um, so you can add a list here. We'll just do restaurants because I already have it. Um, you can Where did save you get it. your uh, font and logo from? By the way, I love them. Yeah, I just I did a logo.com. I found had like the free uh, logos, and I just made this one. Um, I didn't really make it, but I put Play Share in and saw this and really liked it and thought it fit well. Cool. Very cool. Uh, yeah. So. No, you're, you're good. Um, yeah, so here's my restaurants. Um, I can, you know, delete a list if I need to. Um, you can edit the name of the list if you'd like to. Um, you know, you could put places to eat, um, save the changes. And um, so let's say I want to add like a place um, to eat near there. So you can do like eggs. Um, and this is actually pulling from, this is a Google Places API, and it's actually pulling from um, places around the Latin long or the zip code that the user inputted. Um, so you nice. can do that and it'll take you, it'll zoom in to um, the location of where that is. And something I would like to have added was like, you know, in Google Maps, they have like the little, um, like, oh, here's your location, like a little drop pin. Um, I wasn't able to get that working, but <laughs> I, I just try to zoom in enough. So hopefully, yeah, something I'd like to add. Um, so you can do add to places and it'll open up um, this little off canvas here. Um, so you'd say like, these eggs are good. Something, put a description, um, really liked it here. You can select a list that you wanna add it to. And then um, the location is actually like the directions um, from the Google Maps, it'll grab that and go ahead and add that in as a location. Um, so now after you added it, you can open it up here um, and it'll say like what it is. You can edit it if you want. Um, you can add in basically whatever, um, whatever changes you want. Great place and save it <clears> Then <throat> it'll show up and then um, another thing I added was you could you could share. So I'm using um, one of my other APIs is the email JS API, which I wanted to use the Google Mail API, but I just found it really hard to implement. But um, this works really well. Um, so you basically just send it to put in like who you want to send it to. You could put in an, a message, um, say, you know, you should check out this place. Um, and then you can select. So if you have multiple, it'll always have you know the list and then whatever places are in here. So you can send that and it'll go ahead and send. And then um, I will get an email with that. So it'll have like the place. Um, something I would like to also change is, you know, when I do multiple, I would like it, it looks kind of weird, but um, yeah, I think with the Google Mail API it would probably look a little bit better. Um, but yeah, you can also edit your account. Um, I also have that zip code tracker here. If you put in like the wrong zip code, it'll tell you. Um, you put in the right zip code, save changes. It'll update that. And then it'll be looking um, closer to Columbia, Baltimore area. Um, yeah, I really think that's it. There's really not much else. Um, yeah, most of my CRUD and stuff is just here and the ability to edit and delete um, with the account and also um, the list in places. Nice. That's awesome. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Thank you. Awesome. Uh, Terrence. All right, let me share the screen. Can you guys see it? Yes, we can. Yes. Oh, all right. So, uh, name's Terrence. Welcome to the Domain of Strength. This is a uh, gym log or workout tracker. Basically, I'm not going to read all of it, but a summary is just as a member, you'll be able to track your workout history, find exercises based on muscle groups and examples of how to perform them. And, uh, well, I'll go ahead and do the sign up. This is so off the logic, I'm not really going to sign up. So let's say got this guy here. Uh, password has to be a certain amount. Has to include certain letters as well. You can't register unless you actually input everything correctly. Well, whatever. Anyway, so again, I'm not going to register because I already have an account. So we're just going to go with sign up. We're going to go. Uh, yeah, what is this, man? Hold up. Read all that. Go to the sign in instead. So I already have an account. So don't worry about that other stuff. Cool. No, no worries at all. Sign in. So, you know, it gives you that welcome screen. Enter. So the original plan was once you click on one of these, it would show you, and this is the, one of the API calls. The original plan was I was gonna use YouTube to show you a video of each recommended exercise, but YouTube likes to limit you to only six video searches and that just was not gonna work with this website. So I went with the, um, what is it? Ninja API exercises. I grabbed their exercises as well as the actual instructions. So I, I know no one's gonna really read all that, but you know, it's there anyway. You can look at your arms, chest, abs, back, and legs. The other API is a uh, motivational quote, you know, just kept it simple. Uh, exercises. Well, did, so then, oh, yeah, go ahead. Do the exercises, um, like every time you load, will it, like, will I see, does it the same arms exercises every time I log oh, in, yeah, or does it grab different no, ones no, from it, the API? No. It grabs the same ones. Cool, cool. Thank you. And we have uh, we have the records where you can check out your past exercises. Uh, so let's say you want to delete something, just come in here, delete it, record update it. So now push ups. You want to edit something? You know, I did five reps for fifty pounds, but really I did them for fifty five pounds. I don't know why it's there. So there you go. 55 pounds and um, you know you have your personal best so deadlift three sets two reps 475 well, let's say let's say hypothetically because I have not done this yet let's say I deadlift one set one rep like 500 haven't done that don't believe that all right so now your new personal best is that so that updates as well how is the uh, personal best stored in the database? Uh, so basically, I filtered it by the uh, the max. So it counts, it, the database goes sets, reps, and then pounds. So I filtered by highest value for pounds. Got it. Cool. Okay. So there's like a model for... There is a model for the actual workout and then a model for the user himself. Or herself, or you know, got it right. And then it sounds like you're you're fil right. We are querying the workouts and filtering by by like you said, sets, reps, and pounds. Yes. So it, it grabs it. it grabs the latest person to log in, and then it grabs all that person's exercises. So it's a one to many. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Cool. Oh, and uh, yeah, that's the website. All awesome. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Terrence. Yeah. Alicia, you're up next. All right. Um, okay, so as you guys know, I had the ridiculous notion of doing a multiplayer game. Uh, <laughs> uh, so this is my game here. Um, so I have two users here to show you. So one over here, one over here. Um, so for, let me move you guys over here. So for sign up, you would enter in somebody here. 
Um, Avery has five accounts by now, so <laughs> we'll give Adam one here. Um, and right now you can see I just have password hard coded because it made it a lot easier, but I would obviously get rid of that. Um, and then it takes you to login. And then over here on login, we'll, we'll go ahead and use Avery here, Avery number five. Oh, actually, uh, no, I don't want to do that. I want to do, we'll do this one. Okay, so um, when you start out, so on the homepage, you don't have the nav bar. Um, and then once you log in, you do have it. Um, so then it'll show you your friends here. And uh, I don't think either, oh, this, so Alicia already has Avery as a friend. Um, but then if, like if I did, uh, if I added a friend here, so this is most of my, my cred part over here, I would add new friend over here. And then when, let's see if it's already updated. Yeah, so then here's the friend requests. So you can either accept or decline the friend request. I'll go ahead and accept Adam. That's um, awesome. And then, how did uh, you get that? How did you get the live update and the other um, from the person who just accepted the friend request? So all of this has to go back to my database. So it was pretty simple in that after I got a response from my database, I just did window reload. Um, so then over here, now that Thank Alicia you. accepted Adam's friend request, you can see they show up here. Um, I stole the email idea from uh, Kaylee and mm -hmm. it's using the same exact API. Um, mine's a little bit different in that if I click send code, I have it set up just for ease that you can't send a code until you're in a game, um, which ideally if this were like a regular game, that wouldn't necessarily be the case, but um, I have it set up this way. Um, so we'll go ahead and have this user start a game. Now, um, when I very first like start up my database, there's a pretty significant delay if I haven't used it in a little while and I haven't opened it up for a while. So excuse the very long delay here. Um, but then I have this code and now you'll see I have two new things. So one, I can now send the code and it says email sent. And um, same thing if I open up my email. Oh shoot, I meant to do the other account. Oh well, if I open up my other email, then here's the account right here. It says, hey, we hope you're ready for some laughs. Join my, join my game. So it automatically pulls the game code and sends that in the email. Um, and then I would just copy and paste that here. So it'd be 153170. And I join the game here. Let me get rid of, sorry about this. Okay, so I do have it to where um, each user has to click their own thing. Now, fair warning, there is a lot and back and forth between the users and, and the database. So um, there's some conflict here in that um, depending on when certain data gets sent to the database and comes back, um, you may see a couple of, of blips here, um, but I'll, I'll walk you through that. So I also have it set to where it's constantly every 10 seconds, it's asking the database for more information because I have to know when one user does something, the other user has to know that, the, that they did something. So it's constantly asking, give me that information, give me that information. Um, so I just have that they both click. This is my second API here um, where it just grabs a random meme. Um, and so this is kind of, so the idea here is just, so, just kind of like cards against humanity, except for rather than the center card being like a phrase, it's an image, it's a meme. Um, and then down here, these are actual cards against humanity cards. Uh, so that's my third API down here. Um, so you would set, you would check one. <laughs> also, this is not a, uh, this is not a. Mm -hmm. PG game here, as you guys know. So 
cover your eyes if you don't want to read something you don't want to read. But yeah, we're we're okay with it. We we generally like to keep it workplace professional, but totally fine. Well, we'll go as workplace as we can, and we'll just click. Um, this is happy hour. It's happy hour time. Customer with literally a million questions. That's pretty PG. Um, and then just to be safe, I wait until the other person can see the card. Um, just again, because I have it set to every 10 seconds. So once that card shows up, then I have the other person pick one. It says all players have selected and you can see it flips them for them. Um, and so then they have to vote. So we'll just go with the friend zone. So that person votes and then here soon you'll see it pop up over here. And, and then, is that you're pulling the database X number of seconds and then that's how the other player know that the vote just happened? Yes. Yeah, so there's also cool. a thousand, like there's so much chaining involved in a game. I never realized that like I have about a thousand conditionals on like only check, only check if this is like, so I don't want you to check the database for the winning card until all players have voted. So once all players have voted, I want you to tell everybody that the players have voted. And then once all players have voted, now I want you to calculate, send, send those cards to the database. The database gathers all those selected cards, sends it back. Then I do another call for that. And then I have another function that calculates, you, you saw it kind of, um, it said winning card, right? Showed that on both. Um, yeah, that's awesome. And, and then once there's a winning card, um, that winning card gets sent up to the database and then figures out who is the owner of that card and then gives that owner a point. Um, and then now they're on a new round and it resets the round. And that's where I occasionally get bugs. So sometimes it works just fine. Like, let's see, it worked exactly how it's supposed to this time. Um, but like if we were to go to another and you can see it automatically gave them a card, right? So now they have six cards again. So when the round resets, um, they get a new card. And then also you can see that this player selected a card. So now they don't have the option to choose another card. Um, so now this person can choose one. Um, and then it calculates, have all the players selected a card? And if so, that's when it flips it. So you can see I was like trying to do the face down thing um, with that, what the meme logo thing. Um, and so then uh, they would vote here. Um, we'll see if the bug pops up or not. Um, so alerts that please, these players have voted. Um, it calculates the winning card that gets sent up. Um, calculates the uh, winner. So now they're tied with one with one point here. Um, and the game essentially goes until um, till somebody wins six points. Um, and then it goes until they get six points and, and then that's and then they alert that they've they've won a game. Um, that's awesome. So, you can see I have like these little hovers and sh shadow things that I put on on there. Um, and so this meme that was this was actually kind of fun was that uh, that little dot thing with the smiles. I grabbed that from a free vector site, but then like the rest of that I had to make inside of a, a different like editing program. Um, so then you leave game and um, I, I did go back to an earlier commit, but I, that is something I fixed to where it would um, navigate you to the homepage. And I, and I guess that's not on this commit, um, but then when you log out, it brings you back to the thing. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but um, like right now, this is actually a image mapper. So um, this is all an image. And then I set up like, um, functions when you click on those things. And then so like when you log in, um, oops, you can see that those change to join game and start game. So that's a different um, thing. But yeah, you can delete your friends, you can send them the code, you can add a friend, and then you can 
accept or delete your friend request. And that's, uh, that's my app. Any questions? Yeah, what happens when they're voting on the cards and it's a tie? So I had logic for that. Um, so I'll go ahead and share my screen. So I do have logic for that. Uh, that's on my, I think it's on here, tie. Tie, okay, yeah. So this is my, oh, actually you can see it's still pinging the database. So unless I refresh the page, then, then it'll stop. So uh, actually I have to log this user out. Where is it? Sorry, the, the con frequent calls to the database irritate me to no end, so I always stop it. <laughs> um, okay, so this is my check winner, basically. So um, up here, I have, I have get the highest votes, and then if, if there's more than one card that has the highest number of votes, then I want you to... Um, do a random index and select um, that random card essentially. Um, and then down here in the alert, if there's, if there's a tie, then they'll give you a different message that basically says there was a tie, it was randomly selected and this person won the round. Um, now this functionality is not working right now. And the reason for that is because I realized that I hadn't added in logic yet to where this, this functionality, functionality basically has to happen in my database rather than in the front end. Because if it's in the front end, then they will both run it and they could get different results, right? Like one person could get index zero and then the other person could get index one. So I need, uh, I need to move random. that. Yeah, so yeah. I need to move that back to my database to select a tie. Um, but for the um, demo, I obviously just did not do a tie. So it's not working. Uh, but there is, uh, I mean, there's like a thousand things to it. I had to have, um, I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six models and a crap ton of database functionality here. So it's. Yeah. There's, I don't know if you can hear, but in the classroom, there everyone just audibly like had a wild moment looking at all the the few backend code. Um, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I've never broken six hundred lines before, so that was pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, making getting any kind of multiplayer like distributed type application working is no joke. For sure. Yeah, I am happy. So the the bug that I have right now, and it didn't show you the bug, which is kind of funny, it worked. So that was one of the things that made this project very hard was because I would get unpredictable results depending on how, like the timing of the server sending data. And seriously, Avery and I spent literally all day yesterday trying to fix this bug. I spent some time with Zainab. I spent some time with Raphael. None of us have been able to figure out yet what exactly is causing the bug, um, but it's where um, when the round resets, um, it's almost like the round won't, it will reset for one user, um, but it won't show them the select buttons. So you, so if, but if the other player selects a card, then it like almost forces the database to catch back up and then their buttons reappear and then they can keep playing the game, so. Um, Adam has promised me over the next two weeks we will find an answer for that that bug. <laughs> Hopefully, that promise will be kept, and I we'll see if we'll see if we get the we'll see if we get the bug. Fingers crossed. Oh, and I did. I wanted to do a shout out to Zach because he's got me on the Figma Jam. I am attempting to make a to make a diagram that shows everything that happens with this to be able to show it off in an interview. But I have any, I've only gotten to selecting one card and it's already this long. So I'm losing a little bit of steam <laughs> on making that yeah. part. So we'll see. <laughs> that's yeah, so that's cool. awesome, Alicia. 
Thank you. Yeah, say that, please. No, that was it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your presentation. Yeah, Dan. Yeah. Hey, uh, Alicia, do you have that sketched out? Like on, like you have to have that logic all sketched out somewhere, I would think, right? Um, well, this is what I had before I started on the thing and it didn't get very far before I was like, um, I'm already, I've already used my entire page, so I couldn't really draw it out. No, but I guess as far as like, if you're wondering what my planning, I am, a, I'm a huge planner. So, um, like where the heck did it go? Share screen. So like for me, I have to have, um, a good idea of what I'm going to do. And so. I sat there and I said, okay, what all does the home page need to be able to do? What all does the sign up page need to be able to do? The login page. The... And then this is where I started to realize I was in for the long haul because you can see when I first started out, I was like, wait a minute, do I have to, how do I do this? Does this have to be in my back end? And as I started planning out my models more and more, I was like, okay, wait a minute, all of this has to be and my back end, how the heck do I keep track of this? So <laughs> there was a lot of uh, planning. And then I um, started a list of like, what all do I have to fix right now to be able to get it to like the MVP, I guess, if you will. And then what are all like the like to's that I would like to fix later. Um, and then I just planned out each of my models as far as like what they would do. I had to change my database a few times because I would come across like, um, Oh, I didn't account like one of the one, one simple example was I needed to know how many cards um, because you got to also realize like if this were real, it's not just the players in the game. It's like what players inside this specific game. Right. Because ideally, like Dan and Dalton could be playing over here on this game. But then at the same time, Avery and Zayna could be playing over here on this game. So there's also another model that has to keep track of like which players are on which game with which cards all in this one big pot. So I did have to change my models a couple of times to fix that. Did that answer your question? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm just gonna take with this and run with this as a, as a teaching moment. Um, Alicia, all of that documentation is great stuff to include in your GitHub and Markdown files as documentation and like descriptions of project architecture and stuff. Um, and that's true for everyone else too, like any sort of diagrams or like docs you have, um, that's great stuff to have. And it's really common that on the job, you might, you know, be handed a pretty big task and like more so as a mid-level engineer, but even as a junior, you'll end up with with tasks where you realize, all right, I have to, there's some planning involved here and you have to start mapping stuff out like that. Um, so I just wanted to take that thought and run with it for a moment. Yeah, that's awesome, Alicia. Again, great job and, and thank you for the presentation. Yeah, um, I'll answer Logan's question real quick. What he asked, what if someone logs out in the middle of the game? Um, so when a user logs out, I have to delete their game user Right, so when they when they create an account, they have a user model. But when they either create or join a game, I create a game user model, um, which keeps track of like their points and um, various things like that. So when a user logs out, I delete that model. Um, so then every everything that goes with them would go away. So like in the game, those points just wouldn't exist anymore. It wouldn't show that player anymore. And it's almost like if there's three players, now there's just two and all of those points just went away, but the rest of the people could keep playing the game. That's great. Thank you so much. Anyone have anything else? No? Awesome. Dalton, you're up next. Are you ready? <laughs> sure. <laughs> so uh, I feel like now mine is going to look even. So I like the styling, as you can see, I feel like it's horrible. I think as Raphael once said, it's essentially just unstyled bootstrap. And so I think the issue I kind of came across is so since it's all just like kind of just displaying static data. Oh, and I also before I start, I did want to show. So 
the, my website is completely functional without an account. So like if you try to go to your save games, it's just going to tell you to sign in. But like everything else, so say you want to search for teams, or you can do anything you want. And then when you click, it has a little loading screen. And then so the, the weather API was not as good as I wanted it to be. So there's really not a lot of data I felt like it was really useful. So really, I just pulled the temperature, the humidity, and the wind speed. And then this is in military time, just because of how I was trying to do the conversion, it wasn't working. We're trying to get it to AM to PM. Um, I also wanted like pictures of the stadium, but the college football, so that's the two APIs I used is I used the weather API and then obviously the college football API. I really wanted to get a little more in depth with like the weather and maybe show like the stadium and stuff like that. But the API just didn't really have a whole lot. And Dalton, then didn't you start out with like, I think you were looking at one API and then it turned out that there were some issues with that. Yeah. So, yeah. So it kind of, it, this kind of just de devolved from that having the first API issue. And then I found this one, which I actually like better to be honest, but I don't feel like it's like as verbose maybe is a word I could use, but I still felt like there was a lot you could do with it. Um, but That's now cool. I'll show you. And sorry. I, I, no, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to say that real quick because just in general, when demoing, demoing or presenting and talking through something, when it's something like, you know, we had this API and we thought it would be able to give us this. And then as we started to work with it, we discovered actually we couldn't get this because of, you know, something else. So we had to switch gears. That's always a great thing to share, to just talk about that, like bit of work and bit of the journey. That That's all. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so please, always. I, so the login page, at first I had it separate, but personally, I think this looks cool. I don't know. I'm sure it's not standard. I'm sure you wouldn't do this. But if you want to create an account, you use the same form. I have an account. Um, and then I also, so if you wanted to say you wanted to sign up, you would click this. But since I just want to log in, so now it'll tell you right here that you're actually logged in. Um, so now I'll show you. Or no, matter of fact, we'll use the other one. So there's also a match history. So this one's kind of cool. Um, so this is where the API kind of again got into a little issues. Like I know I did this. So the API will actually give you information. I really think up until like college football was beginning to be played. So this game is actually from 1901, but there's no, it doesn't give you actual statistics of games until you get to 2004. So if I do UCLA here, Okay, well, if I could type, it'd go a lot easier. So if you go to 2000, let me do this USC. Okay, yeah. so if you get over 2004, this button will appear. And then when you click it, it'll pull up the loading screen again. And it's essentially the same concept. So this is where the weather API kind of came into play too. So if you're not searching for a game up until 2010, there's just not weather available or data available. So I just kind of display that as a message. But now this wasn't here last time because you weren't logged in. But now if you would like, you can now save it. You'll get a little uh, alert. And then once you come over here to save games, it will now tell you. I was gonna do it so you could edit and add like little personalized messages. I just never got around to it. But for the most part, that was all of the main functionality. Another thing I did wanna do too is have it so when you create an account, you could save your favorite team. You could like look at like how many games your team has won or whatever. But again, with the API, it just didn't have that information. So like a lot of it, I feel like I want to do it just was kind of API limitations. And then for the front end, I don't know. I just couldn't figure out like a better way. And I guess it's sure you can't remove it too. Once you remove it, it'll go away. And then we'll search another team just to show you again. But yeah, so that most of the limitations I felt like were kind of API limited. As for the front end, I just felt like I did not know like a better way of styling such plain information. So I just kind of wanted to present it in like, so this is all your game information. This is all your weather information. But I'm sure maybe I would have, I don't know, tried to think of a different way to do it. I could have, but for the most part, that is the functionality. I honestly think the styling is great for an informational site like this because it makes everything very clear and easy to read. Um, and that's kind of what I was going for too. So thank you. Yeah, I like the logos too. Can you uh, quickly just walk us through your data models and just describe which ones you have? Yeah. So the data, and I can honestly just show you. So there's only two data models. There's just a classic game. And so originally, when I did this, the classic game had a whole lot more data. 
But what I realized is the important part was being able to make this API call to actually view the game. Because when you just go to view your saved games, it's not really important that it's displayed here. It's way more important that you can click this button and go there. So I ended up essentially saving, the most important thing to save was just the game ID. So that way I could call the API based on the game ID and give you way more information as opposed to if I try to save it all and then like weirdly display it. Because essentially, when I click, so when you click, whether you search for mass history or search by team, it literally does the exact same thing as if you just view the game. So I was I was kind of able to standardize it just by saving less, even though that might not seem like what you would want to do. And then the other one is just the, so I, matter of fact, I actually never took out the favorite team, but there was just nothing to do with it. So I ended up not implementing it. Got it. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Awesome. I think that's yeah. it. Thank you so that much. That was a great presentation. Definitely. Thank you. Um, should we? Oh, yeah, we should take a yeah, we should take a break now. Um what are we thinking? 10, 15? I would say 15. Let's do 15 minutes. We'll come back at uh let's say 2:30 um central. Yeah. Awesome. See you guys then. <laughs>